Welcome back into Open Line. I'm Chuck Long here with you for just about 10 more minutes. If you have any of those calls, get on the line with us as quickly as possible. We're talking with legal expert extraordinaire, of course, Kevin Kennedy from the Kennedy Law Firm. Kevin, we were talking a little bit about, uh, as we went into the break, uh, something had come up and I said, you know, one of the, the mantras that you've often taught me is knowledge is power. Um, and yes. I certainly adhere to that. But as I go through a lot of the, the areas of, of questions that we get on your show when you're on each hour, I mean, knowledge is power in everything. You know, whether somebody's got a question about a personal injury or medical malpractice or police misconduct or yes. car accidents, I mean, the more you know, the better. And that's why I think it's always, well, if I don't know it, ask the lawyer. And so that's, that's often what you come back yes. and say. That's why knowledge is power. Yeah, so many of the listeners over the years, they're very educated. And I attribute that to watching a lot of lawyer TV. Uh, you know, I have been a big proponent my whole life of cameras in the courtroom. And they said, well, that's because you were always showing and you were winning. That's why you want a camera. And I said, no, I really always wanted the public to learn. I wanted my children to learn. The more that you know, it'll help them. Hope and pray we are never charged with anything. But if you were, every step of the way is a part of the process. And, you know, they, the insurance companies tell you, don't, when you have a car, don't get out and start a bit. This is my fault. This is my, they could try to deny your coverage. So our insurance company, our coverage is only as good as that company's word. So I don't want to break any of the rules. Read your policy, learn and listen. Always protect yourself and your family. Well, and when we're looking too at reasons that people hire lawyers, you know, sometimes people have often thought, well, it's expensive to hire a lawyer, but it is one of the top 10 reasons why you should hire a lawyer that sometimes yes. it can cost you more without a lawyer. So talk about that. Really? Okay. So I've got lots of years of experience, got lots of lawyers and a lot of smart people. If I was in a jam, we'd hire a lawyer tonight. We would hire a lawyer. You know, my son, He's a doctor. He called me. Said, "Dad, I want." And I said, "Let Daddy think on that." So I'm going to call him again. So lawyers don't have all the answers this quick. And those guys that think they know everything, I'm not willing to take that advice. I'd like for them to think, and I like to hear their ideas. A rational, reasonable person can hear them lay out the facts, and that is plausible. And remember, the law is that's the law. The facts are these are the facts. We bring them together and we try to explain away why this is not liable or why it is liable. All right. Not a lot of time left. So if you do have one of those questions, make sure you get on the line with us as quickly as possible so we can get to those calls. 737-7587. We're going back to our lines right now. Michelle is on the line with us. Michelle, what is your question for Kevin? Can you hear us, Michelle? Yes, I can. All right. Go ahead with your question. All right. My question is, we... We bought property, um, when we initially bought the property, we bought almost nine acres, um, paid the property off. Great. Down the road, we separated the property and made two lots out of it. Built a house on the smaller of the two lots. My homeowners, house insurance, are all saying that my house is sitting on eight point whatever acres. The house is really only on two point whatever acres. We asked the tax surveyor, why have, why did you do this? And his comment was just, well, it's just cheaper for you folks to keep it all as one lot tax wise. Um, did go downtown in Springfield there are two different plots. There's two different, whatever the numbers are, um, for the two pieces of property. Right. Husband has passed away. I'm thinking about selling the house. Um, what do I need to do? Because the house is not sitting on nine acres. The house is only sitting on two point whatever, but the mortgage company has it written up where it's sitting on eight point whatever acres. The first thing I would do is get a real estate lawyer, let him look at the deed, and then he can research the deed. He can look at the dimensions that are in on the deed that the mortgage company has. Remember, banks make mistakes all the time. Lawyers can make mistakes. You'll look through some deeds, and it's called correction deed. What is a correct? That's where someone made a mistake, 
and they later filed a correction deed to correct that. And see, even in my own situation, my family farm, whenever I built my home originally, well, I didn't mortgage the whole farm. I only mortgaged a small portion. Well, then as the years went by, I've moved the fences around. So if anything ever comes, I'll have to deal with that issue. I'd start with a lawyer, let him research it, and hear what he has to say. My professional opinion, and if we have to do a correction deed, let him do it. If we have to run some surveys, let them do it. Talk to your mortgage company, and they'll probably allow you to get it straightened out any way you want to. All right, we've got about a minute and a half left. Ron is on the line with this. Ron, if you can get that question in in a minute and a half, Kevin can answer it for you. So go ahead, Ron, you're on. Okay, Mr. Kennedy, I have a problem. We yes, live in a mobile home park, the Barry's mobile home park. And the problem is they sold the land and they sold it in January, but never told us. And I, we bought our trailer and people, there's over 200 people here, families and stuff, and handicapped people like myself. And they're making us move from, they, they just gave us a letter from the 20th to January 20th to leave. We can't even take our trailer out because we didn't. We can't get the money up there fast. We're on fixed incomes. What? What is our? What can we do? I mean, about a minute. Well, your situation is one that you should go and talk to a lawyer privately. There are some things that would be available in the eviction process, and uh, there may be some considerations that you may have to file a, some type of a Chapter 13. But there's some relief there. Legally, people have the right to sell it. They don't have to necessarily tell you. And then if someone owns it and they want you to move up, that's the general theory. Your circumstances are unusual and all the people around you immediately go talk to a lawyer and find out what your options are. Advance your call. I'm so sorry to hear, but you're not the only one. I hear that story more and more and more. All right, so thank you for calling in, Ron. and. Uh as always, Kevin, I tell you what, this uh, this hour has just flown by. So much great, adv great advice that you have uh, given. Uh, kind of one of the things, Kevin, like I said, it's always uh, the, the I learn so much every time that you're on the show. Got to take with you uh, tonight. The more you know, the more you grow. That's the saying that uh, I really appreciate you uh, sharing with us this evening. That's it. Amen. Keep going and keep growing, Chuck. It's always my pleasure to be with you. And thank everyone for their phone call. We love to share. Absolutely. So, Kevin, good seeing you. When we come back, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we will tell you how you can contact the Kennedy Law Firm. So come on back with us. God bless you.